Mass confusion tonight in Egypt. The world was expecting President Mubarak to go, but after a speech to the nation, he's still there, still president. And now it's volatile with thousands filling the streets. What happens next? Nightly news begins now. Rage and revolution. The Middle East in crisis. This is a special edition of NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. He's refusing to go. Hundreds of thousands of protesters in Cairo, along with this news organization, the White House, people around the world were expecting to see an aircraft, something, departing Cairo by the close of business today with Hosni Mubarak on board. Instead, this man's photo pretty much sums up the reaction of an entire country. When it came time for his speech to the nation on television, Mubarak seemed defiant instead. He said all regimes make mistakes, and he said he's cheated death before. So even while the protesters were chanting, get out, get out, Mubarak, even though the Egyptian army had started the transfer of power, Mubarak is still calling himself the president of Egypt though he has passed most of his powers, apparently, to his vice president. And there are now predictions tomorrow's protest will be the largest in Egyptian history. It is a fluid and highly confusing situation tonight, volatile, in fact. We begin in Cairo once again with our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel. So, Richard, how is it? Again, this news organization, others, the White House, people in America, people in Egypt and around the world thought this day would end with Mubarak's departure, and it didn't. Sources, Brian, close to President Mubarak tell us this was simply not the plan or their understanding, but that over the course of the day, President Mubarak grew more stubborn and changed his intention to step down. The day began with expectation. Protesters gathered in Tahrir Square, mostly planning a major demonstration and a series of work stoppages on Friday. But by late morning, word came that President Mubarak would finally meet the protesters' demands and resign. The Egyptian military made a surprise announcement, signaling that it was throwing its loyalty behind the demonstrators. A top military council held a rare meeting. A spokesman said the armed forces would defend the Egyptian people and their legitimate demands was a coup in the works. Two sources close to President Mubarak told NBC News that Mubarak would resign by the end of the day. Two separate sources have told NBC News that Egypt's president, Hosni Mubarak, will step down tonight. And Are there risks in your mind? Other news organizations, including go. Arabic media, were the told the same. Country. President Mubarak would resign President's by nightfall. Widely expected to resign, at least those protesters there in Tahrir Square think that that's what he's going to do. And make that historic announcement in a speech to the nation. Word quickly traveled to Tahrir Square. Crowds of tens of thousands of protesters swelled to hundreds of thousands. The mood was excited, joyous. The army they felt was with them, and Mubarak would step down soon. As the crowds continued to grow, President Mubarak convened his close advisors. State television showed the president meeting Vice President Omar Suleiman and the Prime Minister. Then at 11 p.m., several hours late, Mubarak finally addressed the nation. His tone didn't sound like a man who was leaving. He said he was speaking to Egyptians as someone who understood their desires, like a father. Mubarak promised to change the constitution and said Egypt has a roadmap and timetable to oversee democratic reforms ahead of elections next fall. The crowds in Tahrir were silent, waiting to hear two words, I resign. Instead, Mubarak said he would transfer authority to Vice President Suleiman, a close associate for years. But Mubarak still called himself president. Minutes later, Suleiman spoke on television, confirming that he would oversee a transition and stressed that Mubarak is acting in the interest of the nation. In Tahrir Square, the reaction was utter disappointment. We were hoping he was going to step down because, like, everyone, it's obvious, like, that's the only thing that's going to, you know, diffuse this bomb. Mubarak seemed to be looking for a middle ground, transferring authority, but remaining president. Egypt seems to be trying to turn President Mubarak into a symbol, a symbolic leader, a grandfather of the nation. But to the protesters, that's clearly not enough. 
Ominous words from that young woman, the only thing that's going to defuse this bomb. What an unbelievable day there in Cairo, Richard. We'll come back to your reporting later on. We want to show you another picture. This one shows shoes being held aloft by Egyptian men while Mubarak spoke. The ultimate sign of disrespect in the Arab world. That should tell you how the crowd reacted to this speech in the square. Our Ron Allen was in the square tonight for the reaction, saw those tens of thousands of Egyptians. Ron, how would you sum up the reaction? Brian, it was just an incredible evening there in the square. So much anticipation, so much excitement, so many people daring to dream that this just might be a different kind of night, a moment in history. We spent time with two young men, both in their 30s, Omar Sedke and Ahmed El El Makri. They're typical of the vanguard of the protesters. They had been there just about every day taking part in the protests. One of them had a wounded hand bandaged because he picked up a tear gas canister and throwed it back at police back sometime last week. We were with them as they listened to the speech, hanging on every word like so many others in the crowd. And when it was over, they were just bitterly disappointed and feeling betrayed by what President Mubarak had said. It's really frustrating. It's really because millions are here. We're waiting to hear good news. And yet he's not giving it to them with no reason but, you know, to preserve his military pride. And this dictator is remaining in our country. And tomorrow there will be a very, very big march that is going to be held. And yet we are calm. We are peaceful. Till when, Mubarak, are you going to provoke us? Till when? The protests have been peaceful, but now there are many people in the square who are predicting there could be some kind of confrontation tomorrow. It's a very, very volatile situation. The protesters left filled with emotion, venting it in the streets, marching with signs and banners saying, leave, leave, leave Mubarak. So it's very unclear what might happen tomorrow. Boy, it does, it does feel newly sparked, Ron, after some people were deflated, then that spark of anger as they departed tonight. Ron Allen, thank you for reporting on your time in the square. And let's go there. We have an NBC News producer who is in Tahrir Square tonight, Chapman Bell. Chapman, how would you describe things right now? Well, Brian, as you can see behind me, people have flocked towards the camera right now, eager to get their message out. They're not leaving. It's almost a, a festival-like atmosphere this evening. You have a stage to the right of me with people dancing and waving flags and singing songs. Uh, there's a tank behind me with people asleep under, under a blanket, staying warm. And then their families and other people of, of all the walks of life walking around the square at the moment. Their message is clear. They are not going anywhere yet until Mubarak leaves his office. They will continue to be here, they tell me. Many have said tomorrow, tomorrow will be the biggest day yet. And they hope that they can, that their efforts will pay off at some point. But as, as I said, tonight it remains festive and peaceful and very organized. Brian? All right, Chapman. Chapman Bell reporting from Tahrir Square tonight. There have been rumors they were going to try a march to the presidential palace. That would be volatile. And we'll see about tomorrow's demonstration.